It's time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Prime Ticket presents the Giants and the Dodgers. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Wednesday evening to you, wherever you may be. There was an old song about the song is over, but the melody lingers on. Well, it's not a melody. It's a discordant note left over from last night's fracas between the Giants and the Dodgers. Number one, Joe Torre has been suspended for one game, and he will sit out tonight's game. Bob Schaefer, the bench coach, suspended one game. He will sit out tomorrow night's game. Clayton Kershaw, suspended for five games, he will appeal. Meanwhile, the Dodgers, for the second time this year, have lost six in a row, trying to get well tonight with Chad Billingsley. And on the mound for the Giants, trying to sweep a three-game series here for the first time in three years, it'll be the left-hander Barry Zito. We'll get to the ball game. It'll be all coming up for you right after this. The all-new 2011 Hyundai Sonata. Visit your Southern California Hyundai dealers today. By Shakey's. Watch the distance from home plate to the pitcher's mound. Go to shakeys.com slash trivia. By CarMax. Now more than ever, the smart choice is CarMax. By AT&T. TV, high-speed internet, home phone, and wireless. Visit att.com or call 1-800-PICK-ATT for details. And buy 76 gasoline. We're on the driver's side. Dodgers have lost six in a row. That ties a season low. They begin the night six games back of first place San Diego. 
Our Alexis pursuing perfection is a highlight on a low night. First inning, Andre Ethier, his 16th home run of the season. That ties the team high with Matt Kemp. It comes off Winsicum. They led 3 0 after one. The Dodgers are up 5 1 later, end up losing the game 7 5. Jim Watson, Steve Lyons in center field. We have suspensions. Joe Torrey will not be in the dugout or the clubhouse tonight. Manny is on the DL. Guys called up from Albuquerque. The Dodgers are a mess right now. Is all of this just a distraction from the real problems of this baseball club? Yeah, the real problem is they're not winning any games. When you talk about their atrocious right now with runners in scoring position, forget about the bean balls and the suspensions and the ejections from last night. Jonathan Broxton was on the hill last night, two out of the last three nights, losing another ball game, basically. You had a chance to beat the premier pitcher in baseball, Tim Lincecum, last night. You were ahead 5-1, to one, and you let it slip away. That's got to change, and it's got to change quickly. Dodgers Giants, it's always special. It's Billingsley against Zito, and the Giants go for their first sweep at Dodger Stadium in three years. See you after the game. Everybody and a very pleasant Wednesday evening to you, wherever you may be. It may be Dodger Stadium, it may be California, but it's still the Giants and the Dodgers wherever they play. And of course, as you probably know, they came up with a dandy last night. So the Giants and the Dodgers down in the dugout, Rick Honeycutt as the pitching coach, talking to tonight's manager, Don Mattingly. Bob Schaefer will probably be in the dugout tonight, and Joe Torrey will not be in the clubhouse, we understand, as he will ride out his one-game suspension. Then tomorrow night, Bob Schaefer will have the night off, and Joe will be back. Meanwhile, Schaefer sitting quietly for the moment, and he's here tonight, but not tomorrow. 
We'll take a look now at the Giant lineup, and it starts off with Andre Torres, who had that big double last night, followed by Freddie Sanchez and Aubrey Huff. Buster Posey behind the plate, and is he ever making an impression? Pablo Sandoval at third, Juan Uribe at short, Travis Ishikawa at first base, Nate Sheerholz in right field, and Barry Zito will be on the mound. On the mound for the Dodgers, and that would be Chad Billingsley trying to salvage a game in this three-game series. The Giants have a lot going on. The last time they swept a three-game series at Dodger Stadium was in April of 2007. For Billingsley at 25 years old, four and two in his career against the Giants. This will be his second start. He started the end of June in San Francisco, went six innings, allowed two earned runs, and was not involved in the decision. The Dodgers did win the game four to two. So Billingsley has concluded his warm-ups, and it'll be Torrey, Sanchez, and Huff coming up in that order. The plate umpire tonight is Tim McClellan, and it's kind of interesting that the veteran umpire, 28 and a half years in the big leagues, so Tim is the crew chief, and he is accustomed to controversy, and if you don't think so, if you look back in the record books, do you remember the famous tar and the bat and George Brett at Yankee Stadium? Well, Tim McClellan was right up in the middle of all of that. We can talk a little bit because Russell Martin has something in his right eye. Also, today we had the news that the major, as they called him, Ralph Houck, passed away today at the age of 90. Houck appeared and played for the Yankees over an eight-year span. He managed over 3,000 games, managing the Yankees and the Red Sox, one of four men to manage both teams. And Ralph was at the helm when the Dodgers swept the Yankees in 1963. Well, you tie it in with Tim McClellan, because when McClellan heard that Ralph Houck had passed, he said, oh, he was the first manager I ever ejected. Meanwhile, Andre Torres fouls off the first pitch, and the count 0-1. Torres hitting 277, eight home runs, 34 runs batted in. Switch hitter turned around to bat right-handed against George Sherrill, who never had a chance to warm up last night and doubled in two big runs. Torres slaps one foul off to the left, and the count 0-2. Temperature in a beautiful evening, 71 degrees. Torres on this road trip hitting 250. And the strike two pitch on the way, check swing, pitch in the dirt, and a one ball, two strike count. And looking at Billingsley's work individually, against the Giants. We'll find that Torres just won for five against him. Uribe has hit him hard in the past. So has Sheerholz. Now the one-two pitch on the way, low again in the dirt. Two and two the count to Andres Torres. So Billingsley trying to turn things around for the Dodgers. We mentioned what a beautiful evening it is. You know, the Dodgers have now played 856 consecutive games here at home without a raindrop. Ground ball wide at first. Loney will underhand to Billingsley just in time and one away. The last time the Dodgers were rained out, you'd have to go back to April the 17th, the year 2000. And, of course, I believe there's something like in all the years we've been here since 1958, I think the Dodgers have been rained out 17 times, maybe. Something like that. So one away, and the batter now is Freddie Sanchez. The Torres grounding out one away. Sanchez, little right hand hitting second baseman. One hit last night. One hit the night before. Freddie takes a pitch in for a strike, and the count 0 and 1. Sanchez batting 273, a home run. 27 runs batted in a couple of years ago. He was the National League batting champ. Strike one pitch on the way. Freddie lifts it off first base. Loney coming over to take a look, but that's going to be well back into the stands. 
0 oh and 2 the count. And looking back through the books, that was a reasonable guess. The Dodgers have been rained out 17 times since they first came here. Sanchez swings, doesn't get it. Down he goes on a slider. And we have two out in the first inning with Aubrey Huff coming up. The Dodgers in the outfield, Carroll, Kemp, and Evier. Blake for call, Belliard and Loney on the infield, and the battery of Martin and Billingsley. So two down first inning and Aubrey Huff big left hand batter checking in at 301 17 home runs 54 runs batted in Aubrey takes low ball one one and zero. Oh. Huff two for three in the past against Billingsley. He has hit safely in his last seven games. The next pitch is a little ground ball to the right side. Belliard is out on the grass comes in to get it. So the Giants tip go one, two, three. Billingsley walks off, and at the end of half an inning, ten pitches, and the Giants fail to score. Then you have Casey Blake, James Loney, Ronnie Belliard at second base, Russell Martin, and Chad Billingsley. On the mound for the Giants, a 32-year-old left-hander making his 20th start, and that would be Barry Zito. Zito started off the year 5-0, and but he has struggled a bit ever since. In his first six assignments, going 5-0, and and in his last 13, He's turned around to go three and four. A Cy Young Award winner, so the Dodgers looked at a double winner last night with Lincecum, and they get Zito tonight. Barry, by the way, six and five lifetime against the Dodgers in his career. And the big left hand is first pitch to Rafael for call outside ball one. For call is hitting 516 against the Giants this year. One big reason why his overall average. 337. He takes a strike and the count one and one. For Rafael, leading the league with that 337 batting average, and he's hit safely in 19 of the last 21 games. He swings, pops it foul off third. That will find its way back into the stands, and the count goes one and two. In looking at for call and his work against Barry Zito, Raphael is hitting 393 against the left handed Zito from the third base side of the pitching rubber, and Barry's one two curveball is a little low in the dirt. Two and two the count. Barry Zito wasn't drafted out of University High School in San Diego, spent his freshman year at University of California, Santa Barbara transferred to Pierce Community College in Woodland Hills in hopes of getting drafted and then 
went over to Southern California. The pitch is swung on and fouled away. As a freshman at USC in 1997, he eventually established himself as a first team All American in 1999. So here is Barry Zito, best known, I guess, besides the Cy Young Award winner, the fact of his big contract. The pitch to Rafael for call way off the plate, and the count runs three and two. The big contract, he signed one worth $126 million. Now the 3 2 pitch for call holds up, check swing, no swing for ball four. So Rafael for call walked in the first inning last night, stole second, and Xavier Paul doubled him in. So now with Rafael at first, for call as a base stealing threat always has stolen 16 out of 19. And here is Jamie. For the 17th time in his career, playing left field, right hand hitter batting 288. Zito looks, comes to the plate, fastball, in for a strike, and you count 0 and 1. Since you have a definite base dealer at first base, if you're Jamie Carroll, even though Zito is known for his curveball, you have to figure he's going to see more fastballs trying to get the ball to Buster Posey to cut down for call if indeed he's going. So the first battle of the night is right now. Zito at the belt, looks it for call, back he comes and there's a ground ball to short, quick flip for one, return to first, not in time. So the Giants get a force play, and more importantly for them, they get for call off the bases. So Jamie Carroll hits into the force play, one away, and the battle will be Andre E here. The Dodgers trying to snap a six game losing streak. They've had a six game losing streak twice this year. You have to go back to 2008. They not only lost seven in a row, they lost eight in a row two years ago. So here's Ethier batting 313, 16 home runs, 57 runs batted in, and Zito's fastball outside, ball one, one and oh. Andre Ethier hitting 217 against Barry Zito. That translates 5 for 23. Though so Andre backs out for the moment. Last night hit a two run home run in the first inning. Here comes Zito again. That swung on and foul back, and the count one and one. Zito has been blessed physically, of course, and he's been extremely fortunate. He's never been on the disabled list, and he has never missed a start due to injury. You have to really be blessed to have that kind of a career. Barry straightens up, looks over at first. 1-1 one, one pitch deep here, swung on and missed. 1-2 and two. on deck, Matt Kemp. Barry Zito, he is 6 feet 4, checks in at about 2-10. Born in Las Vegas, last we heard he still lives there, and was originally a first round pick by the Oakland A's. One two pitch, might have been a change up, didn't have too much on it, and they count two and two. For Barry Zito, one thing he does not do is throw too hard. However, he is a marvelous pitcher, and his strikeout to walk ratio is not quite two to one. 2 2 pitch coming up. Zito delivers curveball. Hit just foul ball outside of first base. Jamie Carroll on his way to third. Boy, that was close. And first base umpire Andy Fletcher was the man who knew because he's straddling the foul line. But you can't cut it much closer than that. So if he just misses hitting an extra base double down the line, Ishikawa a head first diving try, but foul ball. So Ethia comes back to try it again, and Jamie Carroll goes back to first. The Giants have clinched this series, a three game series, and they won the first two. They had lost four straight series to the Dodgers. In fact, they had made it five, and this time they're snapping that streak. 2 2 pitch on the way. Ethier slow ground ball. Ishikawa down to his shortstop for the force play, and that's enough. 
So another force play. This one goes three six. And with two out, the battle will be Matt Kemp. Well, Matt coming up, and we'll check and see what he has done against Barry Zito. And he has worn him out. Matt Kemp is 16 for 35. That's a 457 batting average. Though there's no introduction necessary. They know each other very, very well. Zito leans in to get a sign, kind of shakes his left arm. Now straightens up, set at the belt, works his hitter, and flips it low. Ball one. One and oh. On deck, Casey Blake. The changeup at 72, 75. The fastball around 85 to 88. Zito again ready. Short lead at first by eight here. And the pitch to Kemp inside. One ball and one strike. So one and one the count. Zito with two out in the first inning. No score in the ball game. We're just starting. They won't have too much time to cool off because the Giants and Dodgers go after each other again at the last weekend in July. High fly ball to left field, but it appears playable. And on the track in left field is Aubrey Huff to make the catch. So Matt Kemp just misses. No runs, no hits, a man left. And at the end of an inning, no score. Only 18 pitches. So we go to the second inning. No score in the ball game. It'll be Buster Posey, Pablo Sandoval, and then Juan Uribe. Billingsley ready to go to work to the right hand hitting catcher. And Buster takes a strike and the count on one. Buster Posey, he is the oldest of four children, two brothers and a sister. And what an impression he has made since being called up, hitting 352. Eight home runs, 30 runs batted in. Takes low in the count, one ball and one strike. A Giants number one pick only two years ago, and here he is. One ball and one strike to count to Buster. The pitch coming up to him is off the plate, ball two. Buster's true name is Gerald Dempsey Buster Posey the third. He's from Leesburg, Georgia. Went to school at Florida State. 2 1 pitch on the way. He starts to chase it, and it's going to cost him a strike. And they count two and two. Buster Posey, a first round pick by the Giants, so he had a bonus of over $6 million. And apparently, it's been money well spent. The 2 2 pitch, that's low. Ball three, three and two to Posey. Last night, Posey had two singles. 
the night before he had a walk in a single. So Billingsley and Posey squaring away here. And the 3 2 pitch on the way. Swung on, lifted off first down the line. And that will go back into the crowd out of play. Buster Posey is 6 feet 1, 205 pounder. He is 23 years old. Billingsley is 25. Kershaw 22. So they're young fellows who are going to be battling each other for many years to come. 3 2 pitch to Posey is swung on. High fly ball into right center. It's playable. Kemp is the captain out there and makes the catch for the out. So we have one away in the second inning. No score. Pablo Sandoval will be coming up and he'll go through his usual routine. He gets in the box and he goes out in front, kicks the bat four times, hits himself on top of the helmet twice, and is still not quite ready. Last night he went through his familiar routine and swung at the first pitch and grounded out. So Billingsley is ready and the pitch to Pablo is swung on and foul back and the count 0 and 1. Sandoval last night had a key double in the sixth inning. Drove in a couple and got the Giants back in the game. Batting 272 half a dozen home runs 41 runs batted in. Pablo is 5'11 and about 260, but far more agile than that weight would let you think. Plays third, but he also plays first, and he feels that Billingsley's taking too much time, and he backs out. He's from Venezuela. He is ambidextrous and a switch hitter. The strike one pitch on the way. A broken bat, a ground ball wide at third, the out recorded. That was not only a broken bat, it came apart in two shivers right back, one at Billingsley and the other on the grass behind the mound. Boy, did that bat disintegrate, and for Billingsley, he had to get out of the way of not one, but two flying pieces of wood. Either one could have done great damage. Wow. So Sandoval went after a pitch down, and the bat just came apart. Two out, second inning, and Juan Uribe checking in, batting 257, 12 home runs, 51 runs batted in. Chad Billingsley ready, deals, and the first pitch fouled away. 0 and 1 to count to Uribe. Uribe, a veteran, you may remember when he first came up playing for the Colorado Rockies. The strike one pitch on the way to Juan, and the right hand hitter lifts that one down the right field line foul and well back into the crowd. Uribe, 31 years old, came up with the Rockies, played with them through 03. Then he went to the White Sox, and he had four, almost five years with them, and then last year came over to the Giants. 0 and 2 to Juan Uribe. Shortstop and third baseman. Right hand hit awaiting. Billingsley into the windup, and Chad comes back and drops it a little low. 1 and 2 to Uribe. 3 for 8 in the series. The Giants are slowly finishing up 18 of 22 on the road. And they have done very well. Here's the one two pitch, and Uribe pops it up. Going out on the grass is Belliard. Ronnie's still on the grass and makes the catch for the out. So Uribe pops it up, six in a row, retired by Chad Billingsley. 13 pitch inning for him, and at the end of an inning and a half, no score.
score in the ball game. Casey Blake takes off the plate. Ball one, one and zero. Oh. Blake struggling since the All Star break. He's hitting 143 during this six game losing streak. The 1 0 pitch, and that drops in there for a strike, and the count 1 and 1. As far as Blake versus Zito, he is hitting 250 with a home run. The next one to Casey is swung on, high drive to left field, down the line, right down the line, and gone. Home run for Casey Blake. And the Dodgers take a 1 to nothing lead. So Casey lifts it just inside the left field foul pole. That's his second home run against Barry Zito. And for Casey Blake, his 10th home run of the year. He got a breaking ball, a hanger out over the plate. And he was able to pull it just into the seats inside the left field foul pole. So the Dodgers jump out to a one to nothing lead. And the batter now will be James Loney. Zito ready and deals and the pitch inside ball one last home run for Casey the 6th of July against Florida. He now has a string eight straight years with 10 or more home runs. For Zito that would be the ninth home run he's allowed hard ground ball that gets by Sanchez and goes into right field for a base hit. So Loney singles and the batter will be Ronnie Belliard. So a home run followed by a single. And the batter now, Belliard, who's been struggling. Sanchez making a great effort on the grass, trying to smother the ball, but he couldn't do it. So here's Belliard hitting only 218. He was 0 for 22, and he had a couple of hits in St. Louis. Takes a big swing and a miss. Well, Belliard trying to come back alive with the bat. Belliard did make one appearance last night as a pinch hitter and struck out. He takes the next one. That's in for a strike and the count 0 and 2. Belliard started the first game of the series when 0 for 4 struck out, hit into a double play. So no balls and two strikes they count. Loney at first. Zito back with a fastball chased and foul back. That was way off the plate. But Belliard struggling. Can't afford to even think about taking a pitch anywhere around the outside part. So he went out there and just did get a little of it. 0-2 the count to Ronnie Belliard. one nothing Dodgers. Second inning. Zito's next pitch high and away. Ball one. We mentioned earlier that Don Mattingly and Bob Schaefer basically running things from the dugout tonight. Mattingly, the acting manager. And you might wonder, where is Joe Torre? The one-two pitch outside. Joe said he would not be in the clubhouse. Well, he is sitting upstairs with general manager Ned Coletti, along with Kim Ang and Scott Akasaki and Bill DeLury taking in the ball game. Here's the 2 2 pitch on the way off speed, and that's hit into left field. A slider with not much break on it, so it was almost a 77 mile an hour changeup. So, Belliard singles, and Zito having trouble getting an out. A home run by Blake, a single by Loney, and now the single by Belliard. So Zito having a little trouble with his control. That's certainly not where he wanted to get the ball to Belliard. And here is Russell Martin. Two on, nobody out. Dodgers lead one to nothing. Of course, last night, the Dodgers led five to one at one stage. And it got away. Zito ready. And the first pitch in the dirt. Nice block by Posey. One ball and no strikes. The giant pitching staff has done well getting some double plays, but the giant hitters have had a real problem grounding into double plays. Well, that's on the Giants' mind right now as Martin waits. Zito said in the 1 0 pitch on the way, and that's on the outside corner, and a one ball, one strike count. Martin batting 246, five home runs, 
22 runs batted in. Loney away from second, belly art at first. One ball and one strike. Here comes Zito bending a curveball. It's hit back to the box. They get one to Uribe, who guns it to first. And there it is, that double play. So the Giants have been cut by their own sword, but they've also used it very well. Loney has reached third, and with two down, Chad Billingsley. Tell you one thing, Uribe does a great job of jumping in the air to get away from Belliard, and he's still able to double up his man. Fine play by Juan Uribe. Of course, Martin does not run that well anymore, and Uribe was able to dodge the runner, double clutch, and still get the double play. So here's Billingsley. It's one nothing Dodgers, and Chad takes high, ball one. The other thing with a runner at third, you look at Zito and you find he has a half a dozen wild pitches. So Loney has to really be on edge over there, coming down from third. The next pitch in for a strike and a one ball, one strike count. So in the inning, Blake homered, Loney and Belliard single, Martin hits into a double play, and Zito trying to get out of the inning cheaply enough. And the next one is swung on and missed. And they count one and two. Good changeup. That changeup was 76. The slider, which didn't slide, was 77. Barry shaking that left arm. If you remember Alejandro Pena, the right-hander, the way he would shake his arm. The one-two pitch is strike three called. That does it for Billingsley and for the Dodgers. So one run, three hits, one left. As Zito surrenders the home run to Casey Blake, and at the end of two, it's the Dodgers one and the Giants nothing. is brought to you by the new film Dinner for Schmucks in theaters Friday, July 30th, rated PG-13. Third inning, one to nothing Dodgers on the home run by Casey Blake. Now it'll be Travis Ishikawa, Nate Shearholz, and Barry Zito going up against Chad Billingsley. Ishikawa of Japanese descent, and the first pitch to him is a little low ball one. In conjunction with the Nisei Week Foundation, the Dodgers celebrating Japanese American Community Night this evening. And it's nice that Travis Ishikawa would be here to share in the festivities. The pitch outside, ball two, two and O. Oh. Ishikawa, born in Seattle, lives in Federal Way. He is third, well, fourth generation. He takes a strike, two and one. 
His father was third Japanese generation. His great-grandfather emigrated from Japan to work on the railroads. They say he married a mail-order bride and lived happily ever after. For Travis's grandparents are now in their 90s. So Travis Ishikawa, 26 years old. He'd be 27 in September. 6'3", 220. Travis, one for two, hasn't played much in the series. And the 2-2 pitch is swung on and missed. Slider down and in. Down he goes to become the second Billingsley strikeout. And the battle will be Nate Sheerholz. You know, the Dodgers opening day outfield comes to life. A series of collectible action figures. The final giveaway game tomorrow. The first 15,000 kids, 14 and under, receive their own mini Manny presented by Farmer John. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com or call 866-Dodgers. So here's Sheerholz, left-hand hitter. And Nate takes a pitch low, ball one. Sheerholz batting 251, three home runs, 14 runs batted in, appeared as a pinch hitter last night, had an infield single to shortstop. Nate backs away at a pitch in the dirt that goes to the backstop. A cutter makes the count two balls and no strikes. Sheerholz in the first game in the series hit a home run in the fourth inning against James McDonald. So Nate waiting, 2-0 the count. Billingsley ready, comes back, and it is fouled away. I remember when Sheerholz hit that home run. It came in his 72nd career at bat against the Dodgers. They would expect Sheerholz to hit more than what he has done, only three, but he is in and out of the lineup. Now the 2-1 pitch, and Nate takes off the plate. 39 games three years ago, no home runs. 19 games two years ago, one home run. 116 games last year, five home runs. So Nate takes low and draws the walk. So after retiring seven in a row, Billingsley walks Sheerholz, and that'll bring up Barry Zito. Zito is checking with Tim Flannery to see if the bunt is on. And you would have to believe the bunt is on. If there is one thing that Barry Zito can do with the bat is bunt. He has 10 sacrifices. That's third most in the National League this year. So Barry, left-hand batter. And we'll see if he tries to move Sheerholz along. Billingsley ready. Zito shows bunt, fouls it at the plate. And the count 0 and 1. No balls and one strike to Barry Zito. Casey Blake well in on the grass. Loney is ready to push off. And Zito waits at the plate. Now the next one, the bunt is foul, and the count 0-2. So Boshi has a man who can bunt up there, but he's having trouble. No balls and two strikes. If he takes the bunt off, Zito has five hits, two runs batted in. Still 0-2. Out of a stretch goes Billingsley. Zito's going to try to bunt again. The runner goes, and the bunt is down. So Billingsley's only play is to first base. Nice bit of bunting. Zito now has sacrificed 11 times. Sheerholz goes to second, representing the tying run. And the batter will be Andres Torres, who grounded out. Take a look at Zito's bunting technique. The left hand way up on the bat. And just goes out and meets it. The hands are split by a good seven or eight inches. And he does what appears to be so easy and is so difficult. Getting the bunt down. So Sheerholz, the tying run at second with two out. Torres batting left-handed. Grounded out in the first inning. Takes in the dirt. A sliding block by Russell Martin. One ball and no strikes. For Billingsley... 
He has three wild pitches and Martin really saved him on that slider down and dirty. One and oh to Andres Torres batting 276. Torres a track star in high school runs very very well. The 1 0 pitch on the way and he takes low 2 and 0 oh the count on deck Freddie Sanchez. Giants are finishing up 18 of 22 on the road and they have done exceptionally well of those 18 they're 12 and 5 and this is the last one. So for Bruce Boshi he's got his ball club moving very well they have a little two game winning streak more importantly they've won 11 of 13 and they're three back of San Diego. Here's the 2 0 pitch to Andres Torres and that's low talking about San Diego. They were trailing four to two in the ninth inning. Against Atlanta rallied for two to tie it up four four and they've gone into extra innings they're now in the eleventh inning. The Marlins beat the Rockies five to two. Here's the three oh pitch on the way and Torrey stays low ball four. So Billingsley walks two in the inning and with two out. Freddie Sanchez who is struck out in the first inning coming up. Sanchez has struck out three times in the three games. He was one for five last night and Freddie one for five in the first game. So the former batting champ not really on his hitting game right now hitting 271. Sanchez born in Hollywood lives in Burbank and the pitch a big swing and a miss. He wasn't up there to make contact. He was swinging from the heels. It hadn't really paid off. He has just one home run. But that was a big rip by Freddie Sanchez. Freddie is 5'10 maybe 190 and he'll be 33 in December. He has Sheerholtz and Tories out on the lines with two out. Billingsley again out of a stretch and the strike one pitch Sanchez lays off a pitch away and the count one and one. We mentioned it the other night because we admire him so much Sanchez right foot is a half size smaller than his left foot. He lacks certain muscles in his right calf. He was born basically with a club foot. The one one pitch shot up the middle off the glove of Billingsley and that slows it down just enough for the Dodgers to get a force. Belliard goes behind the bag and flipped it to Raphael. So for the Giants a couple of walks and nothing else. Two left and at the end of two and a half one nothing Dodgers.
Third inning for Call, Carroll, and Ethier in that order. And Barry Zito makes his first pitch of the inning, and it's high, ball one. Chad Billingsley just did get his glove on that comeback to slow it down, so that belly yard was able to make the flip to Raphael for call, and that turned out to be a good play to get them out of the inning. Raphael takes off the plate, ball two. For call, walked in the first inning. He's hit safely in 19 of 21. And wearing out the Giants this year, hitting 516. And hits one in the air to center, going back to get it as far as still on the grass and makes the catch for the out. So Rafael, a fly ball to center, and the batter, Jamie Carroll, to hit a ground ball to Ishikawa, and they got a force play at second, so Jamie 0 for 1. One to nothing in favor of the Dodgers. Casey Blake hit one inside the left field foul pole for his 10th home run of the year, and that's it. One nothing Dodgers. Carroll playing left field tonight. Zito into the windup and flips a fastball in for a strike, and the count 0 and 1. So hard to really figure the pitches. That fastball was 82. The slider. 77, a changeup about 75. The next pitch is low and inside, one ball and one strike. So when you talk about finesse, you have come to the right place. A game with Barry Zito, every inch a pitcher. Barry just can't rear back and blow it by the hitter. The 1 1 pitch, ground ball wide a third. In a hurry is Uribe, a high throw is late, and Jamie Carroll is aboard. Uribe had to make the great circle route when Sandoval couldn't get it, and Carroll is able to beat the throw. So an infield single for Jamie Carroll. He's two for two tonight. And the batter will be Andre Ephier, who hit into a force play in the first inning. One nothing favor of the Dodgers. Bottom of the third. Ethier batting 312. 16 home runs. 57 runs batted in. Zito delivers and it is swung on and missed. 0 and 1 to count. The Barry trying to finesse his way through the game. And he's been a master at that. That's for sure. Zito, who plays guitar, he also appeared as a toy soldier in the Nutcracker years ago. Pitch off the plate, one and one. That was in the winter of 2001 in the Oakland Ballet's production of the Nutcracker. One ball and one strike. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch coming up. And that's a pitch that's in for a strike. Looked like a, a flip wristed fastball. Not much to it. One and two the count. Ethia kind of backs out thinking, how in the world did he get that thing by me? One and two the count. Zito set at the belt, looks over at first, works one off the plate, chased and missed by Ethier, who strikes out. So for Zito, that would be his second strikeout, and the battle will be Matt Kim. You know, the Coca-Cola value pack is available tomorrow night. It includes four tickets, four Dodger dogs, four Cokes, four Kemp action figures, $17 a seat. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash specials or call 866-Dodgers. Kemp a long out to left field in the first inning and takes a strike 0-1. Mad hitting 260, 16 home runs, 54 runs batted in. When Barry Zito was in high school, he loved to watch a certain pitcher by the name of Chris Benson pitch. And he tried to copy Benson, who had gone to school at Clemson and was the ace of the Pirate pitching staff. And that has to do with his number. The 1-1 one, one pitch, one on and missed, one and two the count. 
When Benson was at Clemson, he wore 34. Though Barry Zito, when he played in the Cape and at USC, he wore 34. Then he came to the A's and he wanted 12, figure this out, because that's three multiplied by four. Kemp, meanwhile, a fly ball to shallow center. Corey started back. He comes in and makes the catch. Anyway, after doing all that figuring, he settled on 7-5, adding to 12, and that's the number he wears today, 75. The end of three, one nothing dot. Served with curly fries and a drink for only $3.99 plus tax at participating restaurants. And by your Southern California Ford dealers where you'll find the new Transit Connect. Check it out at SCFordDealers.com. one nothing Dodgers, fourth inning. Aubrey Hub, Buster Posey, and Pablo Sandoval. And that's ball one. Curve ball that didn't break. Aubrey Huff grounded out in the first inning has a little seven game hitting streak. In there. One and one. The only run home run by Casey Blake leading off the second inning. That misses down and away ball two. Two and one to Aubrey. Chad Billingsley trying to win his eighth. He is seven and five. Had a rough outing last time out in St. Louis. On the hands and foul back. Aubrey Huff likes to draw as a teenager, sophomore in high school. They asked him to draw a picture from a magazine, and he drew Barry Bonds at AT&T, and right now he whacks it into the gap in right center. That will go to the wall. Huff into second base standing with a double, and again the Giants have the tying run in scoring position. That's 20 doubles for Aubrey Huff, and it adds to a seven-game hitting streak. Got a pitch up and on the outside part of the plate, and just rolled it into right center. So the Giants had Sheerholz reach second in the third inning. Now Huff with nobody out. And here is Buster Posey, a 14 game hitting streak, and ball one. Posey flied to center in the second. Last night he had two base hits to right field. He had a base hit to center in the first game. One and zero. Oh. Has a good look at a strike, and the count one ball and one strike. So Billingsley 
trying to hold on to a one to nothing lead and he's now made 50 pitches. And Posey trying to at least advance the run into third or even get him to tie it up. One one pitch. Ground ball to the right side, so that's what he does. He'll give himself up going the other way and get his man to third. Nice bit of hitting for a rookie. So with one out, a runner at third, Pablo Sandoval is asked to pick him up. Sandoval, six home runs, 41 runs batted in. His numbers are much better left handed. He's hitting 285 from this side of the plate. All six of his home runs hit left handed. And ball one. One and all the count to Pablo Sandoval. Billings leap. Delivers fouled away. Sandoval came into this game hitting 267 against Billingsley. And with a runner at third, remember, Billingsley has three wild pitches. So Huff down the line. One away, one nothing Dodgers, top of the fourth. And ball two, two and one. One out on deck, Juan Uribe. Going after a bad ball. The Sandoval pressing a little bit in the count two and two. Sandoval has had a very bad year, let's put it that way, because a lot is expected of him. He delivered a great deal last year. But not this year, not yet anyway. With runners in scoring position, he's hitting 205. Two and two. Fouled away. Sandoval, as we told you, ambidextrous, born left handed. And then he was playing the outfield as a left handed throwing outfielder. Idolized Omar Vizquel. He's from Venezuela. So he taught himself to be right handed and play shortstop. Dodger infield creeps in a little, exception of Belliard. Two and two the count. And ball three. Sandoval grounded to third in the second inning, so he's 0 for 1. Uribe waits on deck. Dodgers one run, four hits. It's the home run by Casey Blake that put them on the board. Giants no runs, one hit. That's Huff, who doubled and is now at third. Three and two. Breaking ball hit to the right side. Belliard's going to hold his man. So there is the panda, as they call him, blowing another opportunity of picking up a man with runner in scoring position. And he is thoroughly frustrated, angry at himself, and down he goes. So two out, up remains at third, and the batter is Juan Uribe. Uribe hitting 256. He has 12 home runs. 51 runs batted in. The infield can now go back. And a hard ground ball, but Casey's at the other end of it. Throws him out. So the big out was to get Sandoval, and he got him. And at the end of three and a half, it's one to nothing Dodgers.
Brought to you by Toyota. Get a great deal on Toyota's full line of hybrid and fuel-efficient vehicles at your Toyota dealer today. By K-Swiss and by Jack Daniels. Bottom of the fourth inning, one to nothing Dodgers on the home run by Casey Blake, who starts it off and takes ball one. Blake hitting 253, 10 home runs, 39 runs batted in. One ball and one strike. Fastball fouled away. Fastball at 85. His first at bat tonight. Casey got a ball up and was able to hammer it right down the left field line, back in about 10 rows. And that gave the Dodgers the one to nothing lead. One and two the count. Two and two. That so-called fastball, 83 miles an hour. 2-2 two, two pitch. Little ground ball charging Uribe. High throw, but the tag. Nice play by Travis Ishikawa on a high throw from Juan Uribe. Got him on the left shoulder going by. So with one away, James Loney coming up. Ishikawa up the ladder. Nails him just before that foot hits the bag. Wonderful play for Travis. Loney single to right field in the second inning. Big curve ball off the plate. Ball one. James hitting 306. Half a dozen home runs. 64 runs batted in. The very innocent question asked by James Loney last night on the mound. How deep do you want me to play? And Don Mattingly turned to reply and technically made the second visit to the mound. That caused Broxton coming out, although everybody blew that because Broxton, by the rule, should have stayed on the mound and pitched to one more batter. Instead, Broxton left with Mattingly. George Cheryl came in, and the rest is history. But it all started with James asking a very innocent question. How deep? One and one to count. One nothing Dodgers bottom of the fourth. One and two. For Zito a little of this a little of that. He has two strikeouts tonight to give him 93. But that's over about 127 innings. Two and two. And the fastball got him, and James knew it and walks away. Head shaking on an 85 mile an hour fastball that hit the outside corner. Great pitch. Right there. The third strikeout for Barry Zito. And that'll bring up Ronnie Belliard. Fouled away. We told you earlier, San Diego was losing 4 2 in the ninth inning. They scored twice in the ninth to tie it up 4 4. They're now in the 12th inning. Nick Hundley doubled in two, and the Padres are now leading Atlanta 6 4, going to the bottom of the 12th. 0 2 the count to Ronnie Belliard. One and two. Yeah. 
And that's fouled off first. Ishikawa coming over, no play. Years ago, if you were playing a game in the big leagues, you went 0 for 4. If you were the player, you'd talk about the fact that you took the collar in going 0 for 4. Once in a while, you would hear a remark about a pitcher saying, it's a comfortable collar. Go 0 for 4. Another foul ball. It's not very comfortable going 0 for 4 against somebody who throws 95. But I would think if you do go hitless against Zito, it would be a comfortable collar in the fact that he's not about to overpower you at all. 2 and 2. But again, that's what makes it artistry when you look at a fellow like Zito who has been very successful with a little of this and a little of that. He is truly a pitcher. And little pop fly digging is Sanchez and he'll make the play. So down go the Dodgers in the fourth. The Chicago makes a good play at first. Zito walks off and it's still one nothing Dodgers. Uh, just under 17 pitches an inning. Chad Billingsley has made 59 pitches through four. And in the fifth inning, with the Dodgers leading 1 0, it'll be Ishikawa, Sheerholz, and Zito. Ishikawa struck out in the third inning, made that fine tag on the high throw, and Nail Blake coming by. And first ball popped up for call going out and calling. Louis Chicago doesn't hang around as he pops up. One away and the batter Nate Shearholz. Interesting note on Billingsley prior to that pop fly in the first four innings he had eight ground ball outs and the Giants are 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position all on ground balls. That's a strike. In the fourth inning, remember Aubrey Huff led off with a double. Posey grounded to second. Sandoval, the big out, grounded to second. And Uribe, for good measure, grounded to third. One ball and one strike. Billingsley is allowed one hit. And he has walked two. Nate Sherholz has really chilled off the last 49 games. Line drive down the line. So again, the Giants are going to have their third man in scoring position. And holding on at second is Sherholz. 
And the barrel will be Barry Zito. So Sheerholt jumps on one down at the knees. And for most left hand hitters, that's the wheelhouse. The Sheerholtz doubles into the corner. So the Giants had Sheerholtz at second in the third inning. They left him. They had Huff at second in the fourth inning. They left him. And now they have Sheerholtz at second in the fifth inning. And here is Zito. Ball one. One run, four hits for the Dodgers, no runs, two hits for the Giants. And in there, one and one. The outfield has come up. And Kay Zito gets lucky and drops one in. They're up close enough to make a play at the plate. And ball two. Waiting on deck, Andres Torres. And a roller up the middle for call right at the bag. Takes care of it. Moving over to third is Sheerholz with two out. And Andres Torres coming up. A reminder, you know, bring your kids to Dodger Stadium with the purchase of every adult ticket on the field or Lowe's level. Kids 14 and under cost just $5. For details, visit Dodgers.com slash specials. So this is a big at bat now for Andres Torres. Second time the Giants have had a runner at third, and the third time they've had a man in scoring position. And that's ball one. Torres, a switch hitter, but the reason the Dodgers brought in George Sherrill last night to turn him around, he's hitting only 215 right handed, but 307 left handed. Fouled away. One and one the count to Andres Torres. Torres good running speed which is one of the big reasons why he has so many extra base hits one and one off speed two and one Torres is from Puerto Rico born in Aguado raised in Miami originally drafted by the Tigers two and one to Torres. And little ground ball, and the Giants are going to leave another man in scoring position. They're also 0 for 6 now with runners in scoring position. And at the end of four and a half, Billingsley keeps fighting back, and it's 1 0 Dodgers.
One to nothing Dodgers bottom of the fifth inning Russell Martin grounded into a double play in the second inning. Oh for one. And hold everything. Tim McClellan. It's Martin see him gesturing with his right hand and Tim McClellan said OK no pitch. Remember earlier Russell had something in his right eye. A line drive and the catch right at Freddie Sanchez. So Martin lines out one down and Billingsley coming up tonight's trivia question appropriately enough has to do with the Giants and the Dodgers which player has hit the most home runs in the Dodger Giants series since the two teams moved to California in 1958. Ball one to Chad Billingsley. But you can also tell you that the Padres came from behind to tie and went on to win it in 12 innings. Padres six Braves four. Heath Bell came in got a one two three save in the 12th inning. So the Padres win it. One and two the count to Chad Billingsley. After the four games with the Mets and the Dodgers conclude this homestand they'll go to San Diego and San Francisco before coming home to play a four game series with San Diego. So after Sunday the Dodgers will play San Diego seven times in ten days. Two and two. Three and two. One to nothing favor the Dodgers home run by Casey Blake in the second inning. That's it. Got him. So Billings Lee becomes strikeout number four for Barry Zito. And with two out Raphael for call coming up. When the Giants come up in the sixth inning. They'll have Freddie Sanchez, Aubrey Huff, and Buster Posey. For call has walked and flied to center, 0 for 1, hitting 336. And the first one's a strike, 0 and 1. And popped up. Who will it be? It'll be Ishikawa from the looks of things. And he makes the play. So the Dodgers go one, two, three, eight in a row now, retired by Zito, and there remains one nothing Dodgers.
has always teased him, number one on your scorecard and number one in the hearts of America. Well, that was Harold P. Wee Reese. On this day in 1956, he collected his 2,000th hit. Let's go back to this one. Oh, and one to count. To finish the thought, Pee Wee getting his 2,000th hit. There are two current Dodgers, each with 2,500 hits Manny Ramirez and Garrett Anderson. One ball, one strike. Raphael for call would need 417 more hits to get to 2,000. One and one to Sanchez, 0 for 2. One and two the count of Freddy. Giants thoroughly frustrated so far by Billingsley. Three times they've had the tying run at second base or third. And each time Billingsley has kept them away. One and two. And that's hit to center, and it'll be a base hit. So here come the Giants again. So Sanchez aboard with a single to center. Now Huff, Posey, and Sandoval. One of the interesting things about Aubrey Huff, he loves to get that first pitch. If you give it to him, he's hitting 545. If he gets the first pitch to his liking. And a strike. On one. Huff batting 302. Grounded out, double to the gap in right center. Got as far as third. And a fly ball. It'll be playable. Jamie Carroll. So Sanchez stays at first with one out. And the batter, Buster Posey. So he, Aubrey, leaves in a huff. Posey with a 14 game hitting streak, fly to center. Then in the fourth inning, at the huff at double. Posey went the other way, got him over to third, but Sandoval and Uribe left him. So it's still one nothing Dodgers, top of the sixth. Fastball. One run, four hits for the Dodgers, no runs, three hits for the Giants. One ball and one strike. It is no accident that after the Giants had a seven game losing streak, they have turned around to hit in a win in 11 of 13. And over that stretch, since called up, Posey has a 14 game hitting streak. Buster's one of the big reasons. For the resurgence of the Giants, who are three back of San Diego in second place. He was an All American shortstop, converted to catcher at Florida State. Apparently, no pitch. There's no sign or anything, but uh, McClelland is kind of that way. Tim will never be called flamboyant, that's for sure. One and one to count. Two and one. Billingsley throwing hard. He's allowed three hits. He has walked two. He's allowed two men to get to third, three men to be in scoring position, and he's leading one nothing.
That's a strike. Two and two the count. Billingsley is four and two in his career against the Giants. Pitched great against them in June and was not involved in the decision. Fouled away. So two and two to Buster Posey. Buster has two brothers. One is a junior at Florida State playing first and third and occasionally pitching. His youngest brother is a sophomore in high school playing on the varsity team. Two and two. And sliced into right field. Base hit. Down to second base goes Freddy Sanchez. So that means four times now in six innings, the Giants have a man in scoring position. It also means that Posey has now hit in 15 straight. And for the second time, Pablo Sandoval comes up with a chance to at least tie up the game. Another interesting thing about Posey. He singles to right. He had two singles to right last night and a single to center. Though we haven't seen him pull the ball, but he keeps getting base hits. And a fly ball is all Sandoval can produce. Boy, he is dying up there with runners in scoring position. They call him Panda, but I'll tell you what, they'll come up with another name for sure. So he's 0 for 3. And with two down, the batter is Juan Uribe. Uribe popped up, grounded out, 0 for 2. We're in the sixth. Two on, two out, one nothing Dodgers. And a strike on one. The closest game played between these two this year. Middle of April, the Dodgers beat the Giants two to one. One ball and one strike. Uribe 12 home runs, 51 runs batted in, and Travis Ishikawa on deck. At second base, Sanchez at first, Posey. Two out. One run, four hits for the Dodgers. No runs, four hits for the Giants. Slider down and away. Two and one. Padres won. The Rockies lost. So the Rockies are four and a half back of San Diego. Fastball grounded, staggers Loki. He has trouble, but finally picks it up and gets his man. Boy, was that ball hit hard. And Uribe is standing at first base in shock. How in the world did Loney ever stay with it? Watch it staggers him. Getting out of the way of it is Posey. And finally the out recorded, and it's still 1-0 Dodgers.
There's glove to the glove of Raphael for call. So Belliard made a good play and a ball hit up the middle and Billingsley actually got his glove on it to slow it down. Otherwise Ronnie couldn't have caught up to it. So it was a big play one of many the Dodgers have turned in. The Giants are 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position. So here's Carroll, Ethier, and Kemp. All right, 0 and 1. Jamie playing left field, hit into a force play, single to short. One for two, hitting 290. That's a strike. 0 and 2. So Zito gave up the home run to Casey Blake. The Dodgers have gotten one other man to third base. That was Loney after a double play. For the Giants, they've had a man in scoring position in the second inning, in the fourth inning, in the fifth inning, and in the sixth inning. And seven of the eight ground ball outs with runners in scoring position. The only one in the air was when Sandoval came up with two on and one out and hit a fly ball to left field. Curve ball still two and two. So Zito who began the year five and zero oh in his first six starts then had a bumpy ride in the next 13 starts went three and four but he's pitching a dandy tonight except for that home run ball by Casey Blake. Two and two. Giants leave and the Mets will be here. And tomorrow night, Hiroki Kuroda and Hisanori Takahashi. It's a shame they're not matched up tonight. Two and two. High pop fly, really, into shallow center. Tory's there. One away, Andre Ethier hit into a force play and struck out. Zito has struck out four and walked one. He walked for call leading off the game. Starts him with a breaking ball off the plate. Ball one. Breaking ball inside and outside. He's behind two and zero. Oh. You might notice the giant colors are orange and black. And the only fellow who's going to show you his stockings. Is Barry Zito. Black with orange ring. High fly ball to right field. Back to the track goes Shearholz at the wall to make the catch. So Ethia just misses hitting one out. Two down in the sixth. Matt Kemp coming up. Well, it was almost a home run, which brings back that trivia question. Who's hit the most home runs in the Dodger Giants series? Since the two teams moved to California, and the answer, the great Willie Mays. 56 home runs. No Dodger has hit more than Ron Say with 34. The great Mays. Boy, was he something. He had 98 home runs against the Dodgers during his playing time. He had 56 against Los Angeles as a giant. He had 41 against the Brooklyn Dodgers. And he even hit one against the Dodgers when he was a man. That's a little flare in the right. It will drop. So Kemp hit a long out to left. Then a fly ball to center. And now a little flare to right for a single. And the batter is Casey Blake, who homered. And was thrown out on the ground ball to Uribe who made a high throw and Ishikawa made a nice tag getting Casey gone by.
One nothing Dodgers. Bottom of the six. Two out. Kemp a threat. Matt has stolen 15. Ball one. But he's also been thrown out 11 times. Fastball flip, but outside, ball two. Casey hitting 253, 10 home runs, 39 runs batted in. James Loney on deck. Squirted foul. Two and one. Barry Zito has been pitching in the major league since the year 2000. Barry had one year where he won over 20, won 23 back in 2002. Two and one. Little ground ball. It'll be Uribe getting it to Sanchez for the force on count. No runs to hit a man left. And at the end of six, quite a duel. One to nothing, Dodgers. Off throwing Zito has struck out twice as many as the hard throwing Billingsley. And even that's not much. Four strikeouts to two. Remember, Billingsley a couple of years ago struck out 13. Billingsley this year struck out 11 against Arizona. But with only two strikeouts, he's kind of finessing the Giants. One ball and one strike. Ishikawa has struck out, popped up. Travis hitting 333. One and one. One and two. Billingsley has pitched a four hit shutout through six innings despite getting only three swings and misses. But he's been unusually efficient. 14 of the 18 outs on at bats of four pitchers or less. And he's had 11 ground ball outs. 
So it's a different kind of a game for Chad tonight. And it's been a gem. Remember his last game, four innings, ten hits, and seven earned runs. Two and two. Chad has allowed four hits. Walk two. Walk both of them in the third inning. And high chopper to Loney. He'll take it to the bag, one away, and Ishikawa goes 0 for 3. So, are you traveling this season? You can take the Dodgers with you. Subscribe to MLB.tv today. See every Dodger game live or on demand on your computer. Visit Dodgers.com to order and get more details. Local in market blackouts will apply. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. So another ground ball for Billingsley. That's 12 ground balls so far. One ball and no strikes to Nate Sheerholz, who has walked and doubled. And a slicing fly ball. Jamie Carroll on the move picks it off. The Sheerholz long fly ball to left, two out, and Barry Zito will be coming up. Nice play by Jamie. He had played left field ten times for Cleveland last year. Zito has sacrificed and grounded out. 0 for one. Slap foul. 0 and one to count. Oh, and one. Little comebacker. Another easy inning for Billingsley. Ten more pitches, that's all. And he walks off at the end of six and a half innings, leading one to nothing. Now the crowd asks to join in the singing of God bless him. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join in the singing of God bless America. Once again, please welcome Judith Hill. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains, to the prairies, to the oceans, wide with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home, oh God bless America, my
in a mystery, and all you have to do is look at the pitchers recently. Barry Zito, for instance, has been struggling in his last 13 starts, three and four. Chad Billingsley shelled in St. Louis, and here they are locked in with the Dodgers leading one to nothing and Billingsley pitching a gem. Ball one Deloney. Last night, Tim Lincecum, who had allowed just one run in 16 innings in his previous two starts, and he couldn't throw a strike if his life depended on it. It just goes and comes throughout the long year. And of course, when it can happen to a, a two time Cy Young Award winner, it comes a little bit as a shock. That's popped up. Who will take charge? It will be Uribe. Deloney pops it up, one away in the seventh inning. Second baseman, number three, Ronnie Belliard. Belliard coming up, single a left, and popped up. Belliard hitting 223. Squirts that one. Ishikawa will feed high, but nice play for Zito. Two down. When the Giants come up in the eighth inning, it'll be the top of the order. Andres Torres, the center fielder. Freddie Sanchez at second base. And Aubrey Huff, the left fielder. If anybody gets on, it will be the Number four hitter, Buster Posey. Two out, bottom of the seven. One to nothing, Dodgers. Martin 0 for 2, grounded into a double play, and it'll line drive right at Freddie Sanchez. Two and all. Zito had made 92 pitches through six innings. That's a strike. Two and one. This will be his 100th pitch. Giants do not give you the pitch count for their pitchers. So you really don't know whether he's getting too close or not near enough. And he walks him with two out. For Zito, he walked for call leading off the game. And now a two out walk to Martin will bring up Billingsley. Last night, Tim Lincecum made only 80 pitches, and he was history. Kershaw made 104. Clayton Kershaw received a five-game suspension from the brouhaha of last night. They will appeal that. Joe Torre got a one-game suspension. He's sitting with Ned Coletti taking in the game in the general manager's box. Bob Schaefer, a one game suspension. He's in the dugout tonight. There he is. And Bob will take his one game off tomorrow. And as we said, Kershaw will appeal. 0 and 2. They did some checking, and we find that Barry Zito in April against Colorado. Pitched a game 119 pitches. A little flare. That could be trouble. Diving try and catch by Nate Shearholz. The Shearholz makes a big play. No runs, no hits, a man left. Otherwise, for call is coming up with two men on. And at the end of seven, it's still one nothing Dodgers.
crowd sitting in on an old-fashioned pitching duel tonight. The Dodgers won, the Giants nothing, and the top of the eighth inning. The Giants against Billingsley have hit 13 ground balls, and they are 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position. So Billingsley has had to bob and weave a little bit, and now he'll face the top of the order, Torres, Sanchez, and Hug. Torres 0 for 2 with a walk. Billingsley is certainly pitching, not trying to strong arm his way. Chad with two strikeouts. Way outside, one and one. Now he's at 100 pitches. For Billingsley, we can look back and see that back at the end of May, he had 120 pitches. And he also had 120 pitches in July against Chicago. Two and one to Andres Torres. And a little ground ball to Jamie Carroll, who's now at second base. Dodgers made a defensive change. Xavier Paul is now in left field. Jamie Carroll came in to take over at second base from Ronnie Belliard. So put ball in Belliard's spot in the lineup. And another ground ball. That's 14 ground balls. And now Freddie Sanchez. Way out in front of it. 0 oh and 1. So he was guessing fastball, and he was still out in front. 0 oh and 1. Sanchez batting 274, and Billingsley with a fastball and a cutter as they count his way. 0 oh and 2. Little roll at the third. Blake bare hand pick up throw and it throws away. Safely back at first base. He didn't make a turn. The so Freddie Sanchez on the slow roller to third and we'll wait on the scorer's judgment. It's a tough play. It's a bare hand do or die play off balance throw and it was between Loney's glove and the left shoulder of Sanchez. And it will go as an error. E5. And the batter will be Aubrey Hub. And ball one. The paid attendance tonight 45,151. 45,151. The Mets will be here starting tomorrow night for a four game series. Aubrey Huff led off the fourth inning with a double and they left him at third. This time he hits one with Kemp in pursuit to pick it off. So a good jump and a good running catch by Matt Kemp. In left center field, uh, right center field. Running to his left. So with two down, the batter is Buster Posey. Posey flied to center, grounded to second, single to right. Oh and one. Sanchez does not do any running over there at first base. He's one for two. The Giants as a team don't do any running. The only one is Torres, who has stolen 17 out of 21. And a fly ball to center Kemp going back to the track to backhand it. 
So after all those ground balls, 13 of them, two fly balls back to back by Huff and Posey, and the Dodgers are still leading. tonight. It happened that quickly. Down the line in the seats. Home run. Dodgers led 1-0 on Blake's home run in the second inning. And that's it. By the way, talking about Casey, when he made that do or die play and they charged error, they've changed that now to a base hit for Sanchez. Bottom of the eighth inning, 1-0 Dodgers. And Raphael for call. Line drive base hit. They'll have to watch Barry Zito now. He's getting high up in his personal pitch count. For Chad Billingsley, he's up there too. Billingsley's made 109 pitches, and he has the ninth inning to go. So here's Jamie Carroll hit into a force play infield single fly to center for a call a definite threat to go. Raphael has stolen 16 out of 19. One run, six hits for the Dodgers. No runs, five hits for the Giants. For call with that base hit has now hit safely in 20 of 22 games. The bunt. Zito picks it up, makes the play, and on the sacrifice, for call goes to second base. So Ethier and Kemp trying to pick him up. Andre Ethier hit into a force play, struck out, and flied to right. Meanwhile, Larry Boa is having words with the third base umpire, Adrian Johnson, who, of course, was the plate umpire during the stormy game last night. Though Adrian, who has two years of Major League experience, had his hands full last night.
Boa trying to keep an eye on for a call, and Uribe is bird dogging him directly behind him to try and take a step or two away. Dodgers won, Giants nothing. In the Giant bullpen, Sergio Romo begins to loosen up. One out. That's a strike. On one. Big breaking ball for call bluffs and then goes back. One and one to count. Nice save by Buster Posey on that big slow curveball. And for call, when he saw Posey drop it, started to move and then wisely retreated. So it's still one and one to Andre Eve here, batting 310. Coming into the game. Ethier was hitting 217 against Zito. Ball two. Going 0 for 3 tonight. Ethier has five hits in 26 at bats against Zito. Two and one. Whoa. Three and one. So Zito walked for call in the first inning. He walked Martin in the seventh. He is three and one to eat here with Kemp on deck. And ball four. So let's see whether that means the end for Zito. Yep. Here comes Bruce Posey. So Barry pitches a gem, but he is angry at himself. He made 112 pitches, and by walking Ethier, he was done. And he'll have to give the ball to Sergio Romo, who'll be facing Matt Kemp. But it was a great outing for both pitchers. One of them had to finally give, and it is Zito. And as he goes out in the eighth inning, it's one to nothing Dodgers. the home run by Casey Blake. However, 
The hitters have failed to give him any support. Billingsley has been tremendous in the clutch, and so somebody has to pay the bill, and right now it's Zito. Sergio Romo, the boy from Brawley, a Dodger fan, a kid growing up, says he remembers sitting just inside the left field foul pole at about 11 years old to see Raul Mondesi hit a big home run. Well, here he is, breaking ball strike to Matt Kemp. Romo, as a kid, would come to see Rudy Cienes, who was from the same part of Brawley. Two on, one out. Another breaking ball in there. Two sliders in a row. Romo is 5'11", 185, working on Kemp. Matt has two fly balls and a single. For call at second, Ethier at first, one out. One nothing Dodgers, bottom of the eighth. Another slider. One and two the count. Sergio's parents are Mexican. He's a native of Brawley. He used to go to Mexicali to play ball. The Giants drafted him back in 2005 out of Mesa State. Two on, one out. For Call and Ethier. And three sliders to take care of Matt Kemp. So he gave him four, one off the plate. Two down. And here's Casey Blake. Casey Blake homered, grounded out, hit into a force play. When the Giants come up in the ninth inning, they will have Pablo Sandoval 0 for 3. Juan Uribe, 0 for 3. Travis Ishikawa, 0 for 3. Unless Boshi goes to the bench. And on the bench, he has Velez a switch hitter and everybody else a right-handed batter. Burrow, Renteria, Rowan, and Whiteside are down in the giant dugout. As Billingsley sits quietly in the dugout, Hung Chi Kuo, who worked two innings last night, is up tonight. Fastball for a strike. So after four sliders to Kemp, Romo comes back with the fastball. Casey hitting 252. Romo made quite an impression on the Giants two years ago as a rookie. He had a streak of 17 and two thirds scoreless innings. Another fastball. One and one. Romo has a lot of pitches as for call and Ethier take their leads. Two out. Fastball, curb, slider, splitter, and a change. One and one. For call is really trying to distract him and he has succeeded. Raphael stole second last night. Well, he has one stolen base in the series. Anything to make the infielders move around a little bit. Especially trying to get your rebate to come in and over to open up the left side. One and one. 
has the slider foul back one and two. Sergio is 27 years old. When, when Romo was a rookie with the Giants his first year, he left tickets for family and friends, and they all showed up wearing Dodger gear. Uh, he heard about that. One and two. And it's hit in the air on the dead run of Torres, and he trapped it. So the run will score, and the Dodgers lead two to nothing. That run is charged to Zito. Andre Storey's tried, but the best he could do is trap it. So for call, scoring with two out easily, and deep here running with two out goes to third. So Casey Blake has driven in both runs with a home run and a single. Dodgers lead two to nothing. They have runners at the corners and James Loney at the plate. Ethier at third also belongs to Zito. Fast ball, ball one. James hitting 304, six home runs, 64 runs batted in. Two runs, seven hits for the Dodgers, no runs, five hits for the Giants. Fastball fouled away. So Casey Blake, Homer leading off the second. Blake singles to drive in a run in the eighth. And of course, the pitches that would haunt Zito was the fact that he walked easier. One and one. Andre now at third, Blake at first. Slow breaking ball, slider for a strike, one and two. Meanwhile, Billingsley now trying to hold on to a two to nothing lead. Billingsley, by the way, has made 109 pitches. So will he go to the mound or will it be Quo? As we mentioned, Sandoval is a switch hitter. Ishikawa and Shearholz are left handed batters. The so Quo down there in the pen could wait to see what develops. Hung Chi Quo was brilliant yet again last night. Deuce is wild here. So it's still two balls, two strikes, two out, two on, two nothing Dodgers. Loney, single to right, struck out, popped the short. Blake held on by Ishikawa. Ethier down the line from third. Two and two. And popped up right side Ishikawa and Sanchez. It is Ishikawa. However, the Dodgers get a big run this late in the game. And at the end of eight, Dodgers two, Giants nothing, and Billingsley is going back out to the mound.
to nothing. Hung Chi Kuo is down in the bullpen to back up Billingsley. Hung Chi Kuo made 20 pitches last night, and he has not pitched on consecutive days all season. Now, the left-hand hitters are in the number seven and eight spots, Ishikawa and Cheerholz. All of the hitters available to Boshi are right-handed. And here's Sandoval. Interesting for how efficient Billingsley has been. 19 of the 24 outs have been on at-bats of four or less pitches. And 10 of the 24 of at-bats of two or less pitches. Fly ball slicing down the line. Foul. Would not hit hard. 0-2. Sandoval cracked his bat. He shattered the bat earlier. Sandoval grounded to third in the second inning. He came up with a runner at third and one out in the fourth and grounded out. Came up with two on and one out and flied out. Though it has been a bad night for the Panda. And the Dodgers lead 2 nothing in the ninth. Little number foul ball with Sandoval going 0 for 2 tonight with runners in scoring position. A guy who is a run producer is hitting less than 200 with runners in scoring position. One big reason why the Giants and Bruce Boshi in particular have to be so frustrated. The Giants trying to sweep the Dodgers here. The last time they swept a series at Dodger Stadium was 2007. One and two. For Barry Zito. Trying to win his ninth. He can't do that. He's six and five in his career against the Dodgers. Pitched a great game, but he's been simply outpitched by Chad Billingsley. One and two. Slow freight just stayed up. That was a curveball, not quite a Vicente Padilla soap bubble, but uh, it was in the low 60s. First time he's thrown that pitch tonight. Two and two. Chad has had 14 ground ball outs. Blake homered in the second. Blake single in a run in the eighth, and that's it. Now back. Sandoval batting 270. Six home runs, 41 runs batted in. And he has been a picture of frustration all night. Well, Billingsley now is pitch count. This will be 116. He's had 120 twice this year. So Sandoval becomes a rare strikeout for Billingsley tonight. He has only struck out three, but he's sure getting a job done. High fastball. And so Sandoval is completely shut down tonight. One away. Now Uribe popped up, grounded out twice. Fouled away. Two runs, seven hits, no errors for the Dodgers. No runs, five hits, no errors for the Giants. Casey Blake has knocked in both runs. The Giants have been shut out seven times this year. Ground ball to for call. So it's amazing, isn't it? Chad Billingsley, who was hit from pillar to post in St. Louis, comes back tonight and pitches a gem. He's got a five-hit shutout with two out. The crowd of 45,000 staying right with him. And the batter is Travis Ishikawa. Struck out, popped up, grounded out. And 
the strike. Oh, and one. Oh, and two. He has now reached 120 pitches for the third time this year. And for the first time this year, he's going to make pitch number 121. One and two. The last time that Chad Billingsley had a complete game and his only shutout, July 30th, two years ago, here against the Giants. Two and two. Though so deuces wild, two balls, two strikes, two out, two nothing Dodgers. Ninth inning. Fouled off the fastball, and he still has some gas in the tank. Throwing over 90 on that fastball here in the ninth after 121, 122 pitches. This will be pitch number 124. Ball three on deck. Nate Sheerholtz. Quo is still on his feet in the bullpen, but he is not throwing. Three and two to Ishikawa. Little ground ball to Jamie Carroll. He's done it. A magnificent effort for Chad Billingsley to shut out the Giants. Two runs, seven hits, and no errors for the Dodgers. No runs, five hits for the Giants. The Giants, by losing, are four back of San Diego. And Barry Zito, who pitched a very good game, was outpitched by Chad Billingsley. Billingsley, by the way, made 125 pitches and got himself his eighth win. So the Dodgers snap a six-game losing streak. They remain six games back of San Diego. And now the Dodgers prepare for a four-game series here against the New York Mets. Then the Dodgers will go out on the road following the series with the Mets and play three in San Diego, three in San Francisco, and come home to play four against San Diego. So for the next 10 days, actually including the Mets series, the Dodgers really have a chance to cut into that six-game deficit. Tomorrow night, we'll be on the air right on KCAL 9. And for the season.